very beginning, you're kind of like this, so that we have a little bit of like, you know, we established that he's right here, and um, it's kind of zoomed in on Wayne. We wanted our characters to really kind of, you know, in, in a least amount of exposition as possible, you know, really be able to uh, bring audience up to the speed of what these legends were. And I mean, there was an extensive audition process to cast this film, because it, it was not just a matter of the fact that we wanted, to be honest, somewhat lesser known actors. We wanted people to be able to kind of separate um, the actor from the character. In, in a way that you can't necessarily do when you cast like like okay. you know really established movie stars. Okay, so where did you find it? Exactly. Oh, it's just on the ground. You know, I uh, hold this for a second. I have it in my bag if you want to see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've done a few found footage movies, and it's always difficult to cast them because you have to uh, find actors that are not only good actors, but they're good with improv, or at least good with like sounding natural. You know, it's, it's a very difficult thing to, to sound like you're really talking, not in a film conversation. Ah! Oh, ah. You okay, you okay? Wow, ah, you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was just my foot. Yeah. What happened, did you twist your ankle? Um, yeah, no, it was just my foot. It just hurt for a second, but it's it? Are you sure? The pressure, yeah. can you feel that? Right. Uh, yeah. What are you, what are you, hey, 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 hey. what, what the is are you this doing? shit? Get out of my bag, that's what my is stuff. This? this looks familiar, doesn't it, guys? It's also just, you know, finding people who could do this type of role and find a way to make it interesting and didn't just feel like they were doing a generic horror movie performance was more challenging than, than we'd kind of expected. Um, and so it was a really length, I mean, we saw literally hundreds, hundreds of audition tapes. Sorry, I gotta send them this shit. <laughs> you just almost got us out of it, too. <laughs> but it was about kind of finding the right chemistry between the actors then. And, you know, once we kind of, you know, figured out that, you know, for example, Brandon and James worked really well together as, as Peter and James. It was, the James thing was a coincidence, but it probably didn't hurt. I remember when uh, we first started auditions, the note that I made when we first watched James read for the role of James was he's like a sad clown. Uh, which I always kind of like. So he, he has a sense of humor, but there's just a sort of haunted sadness to him that kind of lies underneath this, this really positive personality, uh, which f to me felt like what this character always was. The reason we cast him was because he had this great kind of relatability and vulnerability to him, you know, and um, I think that, you know, he brings this kind of sensitivity to the character, which it needs, you know. Okay. Everything excited me about this. There, there is, I've always, <laughs> I'm a humongous wuss, so I've never really been too keen on horror movies and stuff. I, I grew up with um, an older sister who was really into them, and I remember specifically her being obsessed with The Blair Witch. She was crazy about it, and there was um, an incredible disdain on my end of everything scary and uh, you know intentionally upsetting, and so I really avoided it as a child, but I, I understood the gravity of that movie. I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into at first. I think James came in, I mean, he came in a lot of times. You know, not just, not just for us to make sure that he was right for the role, but also once we figured out that he was right for the role, to read other actors, like, against him, to make sure that they, you know, flowed uh, in a way that felt like an actual organic friendship. I met James for the first time in a chemistry read and immediately knew that he was right. I think it was mutual, and um, James is just... He's so right there, and he's got such a good moral compass in, in life, and I think that really helped bring the character of James to life. Also, it helped that James was also James, and that was kind of a funny thing on, on set. I mean, he just made everything so easy. He's just so willing. He's so willing and so um, giving. He's very generous. Callie Hernandez plays as Lisa. The reason we cast her is that she had this, like, you know, kind of cute nerdiness that just comes inherent in her personality. And it was something that, you know, we saw in the character and she just kind of had in herself. And But there's also like a strength there, you know, and it's really important that this character kind of have this fighter element to her, you know, because, 
you know, she's kind of the Ripley of the movie in a lot of ways. You know, the movie starts off in a similar way with Alien, you know, where you, you kind of think you know who your main characters are, and then, you know, as the body count increases, you know, who will survive and, you know, who, who's going to be the lead. And, you know, that's what she ends up doing, you know. And so, you know, even, like, while we were shooting, I, I remember, like, telling her, you know, to watch Alien and kind of think about it in those terms because, you know, the first half of the film, she's going to be mostly behind the camera because she's filming and stuff like that. But then she's going to become the main character character by the end of the movie she becomes the face of the film. 25, take three. <laughs> the audition was not from, it didn't have any kind of inkling, no breakdown of what the movie was. We really didn't know what we were doing until we got to read the script. We had to go down to the studio to read the script and even the script was a safe script so it didn't have the name of the project. It never mentioned the Blair Witch in anything. I didn't know what I was auditioning for. I mean, and did the breakdown said The Woods. So that was like the code name for the film. It was so under wraps. I remember going up to Lionsgate, meeting the producers and, and everybody involved, and they said, you have to sign this non-disclosure agreement, read this safe script that doesn't have the real names in it, and leave without a script. I didn't really find out until Jason um, from Lionsgate pulled us into, we, well, Brandon and I went to go meet with him to pick up the script, which was like a confidential script that you know nobody else could read or still really can't read. Um, we like signed an NDA, and he was like, okay, do you guys know Keep your voices down, close the door, lock the door. This is the Blair Witch. And I was just kind of like, oh, wow, holy shit. <laughs> Ashley. Okay, can you, can you send the drone up? Can you? You know, I think all of Simon's characters that he wrote are great, but I think Ashley on the page had the least to do. And Corbin really breathed life into Ashley and, and made her as much a part of the group as anyone else. She, she many times becomes the character in the film that feels like she is the audience. And I think that she will, she's a more aware of what's going on around her than it seems like some of the other characters are. I think Corbin brings that because she's such a, like a bright, smart performer to begin with that she knows kind of which of these moments are, are, are places that the audiences are gonna kind of really uh, feel for. It just plays on a lot of people's primal fears, like a lot of the situations that the characters get into, and just the idea of like being in the woods and being lost and like, I mean, being in the middle of, of nature is horrifying and then add it at night and then add it like a bunch of people who are like looking for a potential like mystical, terrifying creature. It's like that in itself is horrifying. Corbin is tough, which is part of why it's so funny to watch her morph into this character. <laughs> um, no, no, she's, I, I, I don't really think anybody's particularly like their character, which is why we have a good time with it. We had a week of rehearsal, you know, before we started shooting. So from day one, we were just mining this script and getting all this, this, this gold. James, hey, James, man. I'm so sorry, James. James, don't even worry about them, man. They're pathetic. Brandon just kind of blew me away because I think he had a little bit harder of a task with his character. I think written on the page, he could have been a little more, um, he kept his heart, you know, in it. And he's so much of the comic relief in the film. And I just love watching him, just as, a, as an audience member. So can I invest in this museum? You know what? Peter's long for the ride, but he's also a bit uh, hot-headed and logical because, I mean, like, why would we go out in the woods looking for some tape, you know? But uh, so the, Peter causes a lot of conflict throughout the story because uh, he's a bit of the voice of the audience. You know, the audience is always like, don't go through that. Don't go in that room. And Peter's that guy. Wait, wait, wait. No, please stay. No. Stay here. Well, you, you go ahead, okay? These people are going to die. Can't you see that? Can't you see that? And they're gonna be here forever, okay? But not me. So Lynn and Tolly were some characters that I added at a, uh, to the first draft and just kind of wanted Lionsgate to see what my idea was there with the idea that like, we'd have characters that kind of provided the audience with what they felt like is a safety net of like, this is all the movie's gonna do to scare you. But then it's revealed that it's just Lane and Tolly and messing with them. But then it's revealed that Lane and Tolly are actually right about everything. They're just kind of like bad at communicating and not very like like astute people uh, in terms of their uh, social decorum. Action! 
I loved when I got to do scenes with Wes towards the end. He is so committed, and I love that his, his sweet-natured self got to shine through in the role. So you don't just immediately fucking hate that guy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> because he's, he, has, he had it pretty... He had a, his work cut out for him. <laughs> Lane is uh, a lot of things, actually. So much so that there's things that I'm still discovering uh, as we speak. But um, he's got a little bit of everything. He's creepy. He's a chicken, for sure. Uh, he doesn't really get along with Peter. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 get back, get back, get off me, dude. Talia, you have the symbols from camp, so can I see one? Because this rope looks exactly the same. What the hell? All right, guys, guys, it does, that does not look the same. Okay, so open your eyes. Let look at the puppy. Hey, 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 listen, listen, listen. Like, we, weren't, we weren't just trying to scare you. We weren't lying about the things that have been going on in these woods. We just, no, 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 you know, no, no, no. we needed oh, to fuck. Did you take this? Why? Valerie did such a beautiful job playing Talia. She's really funny. I remember a scene that we did where, you know, Lane and Talia take us to see the tree with the lightning. And Valerie was just looking around. <laughs> and she looked at me at one point, and I had to, every, it took everything in me to not just start busting out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I like nature. I like nature. I started that. Oh, my God. Because Valerie's one of the most intellectually stimulating human beings I've ever worked with. Or really known. I mean, if we were voting for a class president, I would vote for Valerie. <laughs> um, and she has to play this character who's not not intelligent, but she's on another plane. Um, and I loved it because I loved how it sort of has taken this original story of the Blair Witch and kind of translated it into a new format for the genre, which I think filmmakers have been embracing lately that I love, which is really old school horror, which is like, you know, the Blair Witch started found footage and it started this whole way of making horror films where you don't see what's scary, how it almost comes from a skeptical standpoint where you're kind of just seeing the symptoms of the supernatural around you. There are certain things in this movie that's, that call back to the first movie, mostly the style. It's very honest, the performances are very, real and raw. You're wearing it! Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. came back a few hours ago. Oh, okay. The original Bert Blair Witch, there was kind of the insinuation that it was maybe real. But in this one, you're, you know, it's very clear that it's, it's a film. Um, but it's still, it feels like someone is behind the camera and they're filming it. And if it happened to them, it could happen to you too. I think it also uh, gets you face to face and make you ask yourself, like, what would you do in this situation? And how would you react to that? I probably would not go on this trip. 